Income tax 2022-2023 business expenses introduction. Get ready and some coffee because although the best things in life are free, you know eventually the government will find some way to tax them. Most of this information can be found in publication 334 Tax Guide for Small Business for Individuals Who Use Schedule C Tax Year 2023, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula, basically a funny income statement. Most income statements having income minus expenses resulting in net income. Here, having income minus various deductions resulting in tax taxable income, the Schedule C rolling into line one income of the formula, which is a little funny because the sole proprietorship Schedule C is basically itself an income statement, having business income minus business expenses, otherwise known as business deductions, resulting in, in essence, net business income, which rolls into line one income of the income tax formula, basically reflecting the underlying calculation of page one of the 1040 we see here, line number eight, additional income from schedule one being where the schedule C flows into. Here is the schedule one, additional income and adjustments to income part number one, additional income line three, business income or loss from the schedule. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one. Because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Schedule C, here is a Schedule C. Profit or loss from business, having that income statement structure, income minus expenses. We're now on to that category of business expenses. This is the big one, by the way. If I go back to the Schedule C, we can see that most of the time, an income statement for most businesses, one of the major financial statements, the income is not going to have that many line items because we typically do one or two things to generate the income. But of course, the expenses are going to have a lot of line items, even though the total aggregate amount of expenses we hope to be smaller than the income line, resulting in net income as opposed to a net loss. But we pay for a whole wide range of different categories of expenses. Therefore, the expenses, of course, is often going to be the most complex place, the largest area to make basically data input errors and we have the most variety of different kinds of things we have to basically look at in this category. Okay, so you can deduct the cost of operating your business. These costs are known as business expenses. These are costs you do not have to capitalize or include in the cost of goods sold, but can deduct in the current year. Now notice that these expenses are basically the kind of expenses that are most natural to an income tax type of system. In other words, when we think of an income tax, if I go back to the income statement, what should that tax be applied on? Well, you would think it shouldn't be applied to the gross income, the top line. If someone made $100,000, but then it took them $20,000 in order to generate the $100,000, if you taxed on the top line, then you might actually be applying a tax that they can't actually pay because the net income is too small to actually pay it, right? And you could also be disincentivizing certain businesses which have higher amounts of expenses in order to help to generate the business in favor of businesses that don't have to incur so many expenses in order to generate income. So the natural thing for an income tax would be to say, we will allow those types of deductions that are ordinary and necessary deductions in order to generate the income, in essence, applying the tax on net income as opposed to gross income. 
The reason this is a little bit confusing is because most people don't have a Schedule C, and that's the way the IRS kind of likes it, right? The IRS likes to have a situation where it's an employee-employer situation, most people being some kind of employee receiving then a W-2. And in a W-2 situation, the idea would be that the business is the one that incurred all the expenses. They're going to report the Schedule C or the business income tax return like a Schedule C tax return or a partnership uh, type of return recording the business expenses, including the salary on their end. And therefore, on the Form 1040 for an individual who is a W-2 employee, they're not going to be allowed any expenses. That kind of simplifies the process. The expenses that we do allow are often those things that are like above the line deductions or adjustments to income for normal tax returns which are somewhat unusual oftentimes, things like deducting IRA contribution, which is a little bit funny because that's a personal type of contribution. In that case, the IRS is trying to influence our behavior, trying to nudge us because they think we're too stupid to make adequate decisions on our own, right? So you can take a, you can take a, a nice stance to that saying, well, that's what the IRS should do. Or you, could, or you could be kind of like me and say, I don't think that's the way that you should be incentivizing people by nudging them with the tax. I just don't think that's the way to do it. But you can also see that on the Schedule A, where you have the various deductions on the Schedule A, things like charitable contributions and uh, things like the home mortgage interest, which is a personal expense that are deducted on the Schedule A. Those are often not things that are giving you are necessary, ordinary and necessary to generate income. It's either there's been lobbyists that have basically wanted the deduction in order to stimulate their kind of business, or they're trying to stimulate the economy, or there's some kind of political thing, or they're basically trying to incentivize our behavior, telling us it's for our own good because they're such nice care caretakers and they're trying to make thing make us do the right thing because we're stupid. So that's the idea of that. But with the business expenses, these are the most natural type of expenses, which you can see most clearly on a Schedule C because you had to consume these things in order to generate the revenue. Now note when it says here that these are costs that do not have to be capitalized, that's another term that can be a little bit confusing because in different contexts, you can see capitalization might mean different things. What we're basically saying here is that if it has to be capitalized, then you're putting it on the books as an asset as opposed to expensing it. The primary examples being the uh, inventory. So if you have inventory, when you buy the inventory, instead of just expensing the inventory when you purchase it, you typically have to put it on the books as an asset. Now note that the Schedule C itself is an income statement, not a balance sheet. Therefore, we don't have typically most of the assets because it's a balance sheet account on the tax return. But that's why the, the, the tax return requires that second schedule if you have inventory, the cost of goods sold calculation, reconciling beginning and ending inventory. And the other thing that we can say that we capitalize is basically property, plants, and equipment, where once again, if I buy a building, even if on a cash-based system, I'm typically forced to deviate from that cash-based system because the building is such a big difference between when I consume or use the building in the business and when I pay for it, therefore putting it on the books as an asset, a balance sheet account, which is reflected on the tax return, not by having a full balance sheet, but by having possibly depreciation schedules, giving the cost of the depreciable items and calculate depreciation on them, which we'll talk about in future presentations in much more detail. So, did, so to be deductible, a business expense must be both ordinary and necessary. So this gets a little bit messy because the idea, of course, with the business expenses is we have to keep them separate from the personal expenses, remembering that the Schedule C itself isn't a separate legal entity in the same sense that a corporation is. That's the point of a corporation. It's a separate legal entity which has liability protections and so on and so forth, which might be different than you might have for a Schedule C system. But from a bookkeeping standpoint, they are both basically the same in that we want to have them both accounted for separately 
Uh, and so and so that we can then determine those types of things that were necessary to generate revenue in the business and those types of things that are personal. So that's often going to be the confusing factor when we're trying to think about ordinary and necessary thing. The real problem tends to come up with, is this a personal thing or is it a business thing when we have those areas where the two things kind of get co-mixed, like with automobile expenses, for example, like possibly with travel, for example, like with meals and entertainment, possibly, uh, for example. So when we say ordinary and necessary, we have to then get into the terminology. What does it mean to be ordinary and necessary? Does necessary mean like water is necessary to a person? If I don't get it, I die. So if I don't have this expense, the business will die. If I don't pay Google advertising, my whole business will go under, possibly not. So that can't be the that extreme interpretation isn't the general idea. You would think these are normal expenses that you are in the course of that type of business, ordinary and necessary, and that those are kind of normal business expenses that would be needed in order to help to generate uh, the revenue. So an ordinary expense is one that is common and accepted in your field of business. Now realize that sometimes you might have to argue whether or not you have a legitimate business uh, claim. Why would that be the case typically? Because you might have losses, for example, especially in the first couple of years, in which case the IRS is going to say, well, if you have losses, you're going to try to take that against other income. And the IRS is going to be skeptical of doing that. And so they might question your, you know, your losses, and you're going to have to say that you are in a you know, legitimate business. They also might be looking at certain deductions, and they might be more critical about them than others. And certain industries, of course, are more prone to this than others. As a tax preparer business for myself, for example, the IRS isn't usually going to question a lot of my deductions because they're because tax preparation isn't doesn't sound like the most fun thing to do. Right. So it's likely that most of my expenses are pretty standard unless I have a lot of the whining and dining type of money, uh, you know, bringing in the client expenses which oftentimes is one where the questions where the question could come up. Well, is that a business or a personal expense? When you get into things like you're a YouTube creator or you make films or you're in the entertainment world and you're saying, hey, yeah, I'm writing off travel to other places. Well, that obviously from the IRS, that's going to look more personal. I take pictures of beautiful places. Well, the IRS obviously is going to be, <laughs> it's going to, you're going to have, that could be the case that it's deductible for your business, but you want to make sure that you're documenting everything properly so that, so that you, you can realize the fact that the IRS is going to be possibly envious of people that are going around beautiful places and taking pictures, you know, for, <laughs> for their business, right? So you want to, and whereas if other people did that, it would be called a vacation, you know, uh, and then, and so certain businesses, you want to make sure that that you're keeping the proper records and seeing what is ordinary and necessary. So a necessary expense is one that is helpful and appropriate for your business. An expense does not have to be uh, indispensable to be considered necessary. So it's not like if you don't have it, you die. Like if you don't have water, you die. That's not exactly what we're talking about with necessary here because many businesses have expenses that are normal to the business operations, but not necessary in that if they cut them out, they would uh, die, right? So we have uh, more for more information about the general rules for deducting business expenses, see section 162 and its regulations. Caution, if you have an expense that is uh, partly for business and partly personal, separate the personal part from the business. The personal part is not deductible. So this is often the problem that comes in. We have a bookkeeping issue with this in that we would like to have a full different accounting system, possibly using software that's different, possibly having a full different checking account so that we can easily separate uh, the bookkeeping and see what is business versus personal more clearly. And then we have certain situations where that's just not, we have to, it's, we can't really exactly do that. And we have to get into more details, such as the use of an automobile, for example, you put gas in the car, you're using it both business and personal, you're gonna have to find some way to be breaking out the business versus personal, either through an actual calculation of some kind, a percentage calculation, uh, a mileage calculation or something like that. And if you pay for, for example, a home where your business office is, then you're gonna 
going to run into this problem because you're going to be paying the mortgage and the interest and so on. And the interest then could be thought of partially to be business because part of the home you're paying for is for the office, which you're using for the business. And you can't really break out the mortgage payment in terms of principal versus interest, interest that's applied to the personal versus the business, right? And so these are going to be areas where even if you're not a bookkeeper on the tax preparation side of things, you're still going to have to do some bookkeeping stuff because the, especially the auto expense, the depreciation, the home office use are things that even if your bookkeeper was perfect, there's, there could be adjustments to it given the fact of the, of the tax code, how it's laid out, the complications of depreciation and those commingling of certain things that will commonly come up uh, for business and personal that we have to break out in accordance with the rules and the tax code, which we'll talk about in detail later. So useful items, publications that you can take a look at. Uh, we've got publication 463, travel, gift, and car expenses. So the, the car expenses and travel is a common area of contention. Sometimes the IRS is going to put in differentiations between what is constituting as a, a travel being like an overnight travel versus local uh, use of the car, for example, which might be categorized in uh, different areas, meals and entertainment oftentimes it has a limitation of 50% deduction, but if it was categorized as travel, maybe you can get the full deduction in some cases if it was travel versus like meals and entertainment. So you wanna like those questions come up. So 946 uh, to depreciate property. So depreciation is another huge topic. If they're a small business and they just like are a YouTuber or something like that, they might not have much equipment you know, they probably got like a microphone and stuff, but that probably not a whole lot of things that that are going to complicate depreciation too much. But some businesses, of course, need to buy assets. That's the barrier to entry, right? They're buying equipment in order to enter into the field, into the business that they are in. And that that equipment, then we have to make sure that we have on depreciation schedules and are properly calculating depreciation, which again, even if they are a perfect bookkeeper, they won't be able to perfectly calculate depreciation, at least not on a tax basis typically, because the tax calculation for depreciation is slightly different than generally, or very different in many times than generally accepted accounting principles. And therefore, at least for taxes, even if you have the best bookkeeper in the world, they are generally gonna to have to be dependent on tax software to help with the calculation of depreciation and therefore us, if we're doing tax preparation for businesses, even small businesses have to be familiar with uh, when something has to be capitalized for depreciation and how to calculate depreciation.